morning. It is so wonderful to be with you here this morning to worship, and I just want to welcome each of you, whether you're here in person or whether you're joining online. Today, on this second Sunday of Easter, when we are in the midst of the 50 days of Easter time, Easter is not just celebrated and honored. It's not just about one day. The hope of resurrection is something that is ongoing. And, and although Easter tide is a 50-day period leading up to Pentecost, it is something that we can find hope in every day of the year. And so today I am so glad that we can worship together and have that in mind. Today is also communion. All are welcome to participate. And so I invite those of you at home if you um, want to pause and take a minute to grab something that you can participate, some bread or crackers, some juice, or whatever it is that will make it meaningful for you to participate at home. As we begin our service today, I just invite you to take a moment and call to mind where you have experienced God personally in your life this past week. Perhaps it's in something that you saw in nature a note or a phone call or a text that you received from somebody. Maybe it was just a song that you heard or something else that just reminded you. Maybe somebody brought you a baked good or, or just encouraged you in some way. I invite you to call that to mind and if you'd like to share, I'll bring the microphones around. The key to all of that is taking, being intentional to take notice of where God is showing up in the midst of the, the joys and the challenges of our lives so that no matter what is going on that we can draw on that um, at any moment in our life so i'll take a moment and now bring the microphones around Those of you that would like to participate from home, I just invite you, you can type something into the chat box if you'd like to, and the moderator will make sure to read that on your behalf. Is there anyone who would like to share? Yeah, a warm sunny afternoon, this, this last week, I was sitting and resting, and all of a sudden I heard the, mo the mockingbird outside. I, I love mockingbirds, I always feel like they're my sunshine for God even at two and a half. Uh, but this one was just singing its heart out, singing, 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 and it was such a lovely sound. How meaningful. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else this morning want to share? A few weeks ago, I, I, I shared how, how awesome it seemed that the, the bees had discovered my mentor. And as a follow-up, now I look and there are a whole bunch of these little green, beady signs, potential fruit. Now I've been at this game long enough to know that I should not think about all of the harvest yet, but it's um, it's a nice sign. Indeed, thank you for sharing that. Anyone else this morning? Adrian's um, beautiful paintings on the bulletin are so inspiring and beautiful and reflect its power as well as her spirit. Indeed. Thank you for mentioning those. Anyone else this morning who would like to share? Uh, the Jays have been busy refining little baby oak trees all over our property, so that's very interesting. They're trying to reforest our area. And then on my way up to um, Mendocino College for rehearsal and then concert yesterday, right at the gate there's a beautiful um, wisteria and a 
in the pinkest area with very light, you know, 18 inch blossoms. Those were gorgeous. So many of them. Earlier this week, we had a text from our son who lives in Brooklyn. He said, we just had an earthquake here, and it made me homesick. <laughs> it's wonderful to receive those kind of messages, a sense of connection. <clears throat> Anyone else this morning? few years, it comes as no surprise that Osprey, for me, are a very, very uh, specific reminder for me of God's presence in my life. And um, this uh, past Tuesday, um, as I was on my way to, uh, for my mom's creation, cremation, um, there was an Osprey on a post eating a fish on the road that I drive on every day for 13 years that there's never Osprey there. And it was right as we were going on the way and within two days, pg &E has put a nesting box on that post on my road that I come to every day, doesn't matter which direction I'm coming from, so that I'll be passing by that now every day. And there's already an Osprey nesting in that box. Um, for me, an absolutely clear message of God's presence with me at this very difficult time in my life and moving in closer and taking up a, a nesting spot. Um, very meaningful for me to say the least. Continue to take notice of where God is showing up in your life in the ways that are personal and meaningful for you. You will find them if you look. I invite you to listen now, settle in as we enter into the rest of our time of worship today, and listen to the ringing of our bell.
bow your heads for our opening prayer. God of the resurrection, as we gather this morning, we come with joy to tell again and again the amazing news. Christ is risen. Love is victorious over death. May our singing, praying, listening, and proclaiming be a testimony today to the power of your love. We pray this in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for a prayer song, which this morning is Open Mount Eyes That I May See. Scripture today is from John 21, verses 1 through 17, and this is from the New Living Translation. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there, Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the Twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, Fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then Jesus said, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you'll get some. So they did, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped for work. He jumped into the water and headed to shore. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore, for they were only about a hundred yards from the shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them. Fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. 
So Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now, come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time, Jesus asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. <clears throat> he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. We ask for further understanding of this reading. I invite you to bow your heads for prayer. Oh God, as we spend time with this passage, help us to understand what it is that you would have us to hear today and how we can apply it into our own lives. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. I come from a family that loves baseball. And having grown up in Michigan, I am at the very least a third generation Detroit Tigers fan. For those of you who don't follow baseball, you might not know that the season has just gotten underway. And for Detroit Tigers pitcher Casey Mize, the start of this new season is a big deal in his still very young career. In fact, it is an even bigger deal to him than his first major league start back in August of 2020. What's the big deal, you might ask? When he took the mound this past Thursday, it was a monumental moment for him and all of those who had rallied around him over the last two years, because that was the last time Casey stood atop a mound to pitch, due to complicated, two complicated surgeries, one for his pitching arm and the other on his back. Both of these surgeries required a long, grueling road to recovery with ups and downs along the way. It was draining. It was hard work and it took perseverance and determination that only Casey could apply and do. He had encouragement. He had those who supported him. But the effort and the decision to do the work was up to him. And what's more is that over those long two years, there was never a guarantee that Casey would make a full recovery. And even if he did, it wasn't until he stood on the mound on this past Thursday that anyone knew for sure whether he would still be able to compete at the highest level of professional baseball. Ultimately, Casey 
didn't factor into what ended up being a Tigers win in extra innings. But for him, it represented a new beginning. Essentially where it all had begun back on a pitcher's mound. And while that one game does not reveal all that is to come for the rest of the season or even over Casey's career, it does reveal his perseverance and determination to get back on the mound and to do the best of his ability on each day that he has been given to try. Casey's story makes me think of our faith journeys. We might not be able to relate to what it's like to live the life of a professional baseball player, or for that matter, a professional fisherman like Peter. But the references to the ups and downs of life probably hits home for all of us in some way. And likely most of us are also familiar with the experience of new beginnings and new seasons in life. And just like with Casey's experience of having to persevere toward an unknown outcome, we sometimes do not know how our faith will be shaped and stretched as we navigate challenges in life until we emerge on the other side of the experience. Or as is often the case, even further down the road. Peter didn't know how things were gonna continue shape and stretch him. Sometimes it was easier for him to go back to what was comfortable, back to fishing. So disorienting Jesus' death and then seemingly his resurrection and what was going on. He was being stretched and shaped and challenged. Reminds me of our faith lives as well. May we take heart in knowing that even as each day presents new opportunities for us, and even when we feel uncertain or we are not sure if we will be able to take another step, always moving toward us to be with us in the midst of whatever we are experiencing in life and to then help us continue pressing onward. I am grateful that the Bible portrays that when Jesus appeared multiple times to the disciples following his resurrection, that he extended peace and sustenance to them versus judgment of their fear and tentative steps. Indeed, Jesus continued to meet them right where they were and described anew what he had been trying to teach them and prepare them for all along. That being a destiny that included an acceptance and welcome of all. And that involved the caring and tending to the needs of everyone. And that conveyed love and compassion to all humanity. It is the same destiny that Jesus has in mind for each of us today. So what about in our own lives? When others observe us 
Is it clear to them that even as we navigate the challenges and new beginnings in life, that we have chosen to put in the effort and hard work of doing whatever it takes to keep following Jesus so that we too can achieve our destiny. The good news is that we are never asked to go it alone or to rely solely on what we are able to do on any given day. And while it is true that we cannot promise to live out our destiny perfectly, all that is asked of us is to give all that we can of ourselves on any given day while relying on Jesus' promise to provide whatever else may be needed. It doesn't matter where we might have stumbled in the past, or even if we doubted yesterday, or even this morning. Each day, and for that matter, each moment is an opportunity for a new beginning in which Jesus, fully aware of our potential and never wavering in his love for each of us, asks us like he did Peter, do you love me? If you do, feed and care for my sheep. Love them. When Jesus asks me, in response, I want my answer to be, yes, Jesus, I love you. And like Pastor Lauren Pittman declares for her own self, I want to keep pressing onward like Peter. I want to keep reorienting my life towards God's will, to ask for help when I'm sinking, to celebrate the moments of clarity, to pause when I'm not quite getting it, to be open to learning and reflection and redirection, to receive gifts with humility, to acknowledge devastating missteps, and to ask for forgiveness, to run toward hope, and to experience the freedom that is found in God's abundant, astounding grace. And at the end of the journey, perfection is not my goal, nor is it realistic. Rather, I just want others to say that it is clear that I loved Jesus and that I lived out my love for him well. How about you? I invite you to stand now in body or in spirit and to sing our song of response. Christ is risen.
share our joys and concerns and then lift them up together in prayer. I'll bring the microphones around if there are any joys and concerns that you would like to share um, out loud today. And, um, and then we'll pray together. Are there any joys or concerns that you would like to share this morning? It's a wonderful joy to have you here today. And um, the concern is uh, please be in your prayers for your people. Thank you very much. It is a, a joy to be here and for that joining us in. Thank you to God. God. And for the ongoing healing of my heart and soul and also for my brother Kiefer and extended family um, and I'll just add to that our my travel back to Michigan um, for our home services next weekend um, please join me in saying Lord hear our prayers anyone else this morning I know that there are a few people who are under the weather today and we just want to Lift them up in prayer and say, Lord, hear our prayers. And I just uh, invite you now to just take a few moments of silent prayer and reflection. Perhaps there's something on your heart and mind today, and then I will pray. loving and compassionate God. As we sit in quietness, our thoughts are often far from quiet. We wrestle with doubts and fears. We look for answers. We seek hope. And we long for strength and comfort, calmness and courage. And we seek knowledge of your presence and your guidance in our lives. All of that and so much more. We pause now, O oh God, to bring you all of our joys and concerns. There are those we know and love who are ill. And we ask that you would surround them with your strong healing presence. Grant wisdom to those who need answers to difficult questions. Grant hope to those who feel despair. And provide a sense of connection to those who feel isolated. Oh God, as we begin each new day, help us not lose sight of your constant care for all of creation. We ask that you continue to show us how we can be a part of your work in this world, extending your love to all those that we come in contact with. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
as is customary on the first Sunday of each month. We now transition to the part of our service during which we celebrate communion together. As we do so, I invite you to stand together in body or in spirit and sing our communion song, One Bread, One Body. not join us before for communion, we will have the bread and juice together, um, and I will let you know um, when that time is. One of the first things Jesus did after his resurrection was to feed his disciples. And the Gospel of John, as we see in our scripture reading from today, tells us it was a beach fire bread and fish cooked over an open flame. Immediately upon Jesus going through that action, the disciples knew it was Jesus because Jesus was always seeming to feed people. Jesus was always telling the left out and the ignored, the hurting and the hungry, the sick and the hopeful, I have a seat saved for you. That is why we celebrate communion 2,000 years later. We do this to remember. We do this to get a taste of the kingdom of God. I invite each of you to participate in our communion service today with the assurance that Christ always has a seat saved for you. And nothing can ever 
ever change that. Thanks be to God. On the night before he was crucified, Jesus gathered with his friends for a meal. And he took the bread, and after blessing it, Jesus broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. And then after sharing the bread, Jesus took a cup of wine and then he gave it to them to drink, saying, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for all. I invite you to bow your heads. Holy God, may our hearts and minds be alive to what is sacred in these symbols of bread and juice. May they open us to your guidance and to your love for us, for all humankind, and for all life on this earth. Amen. Let us eat and drink together. give thanks. <coughs> Eternal loving God, we thank you for this simple common meal that brings the spirit and reality of Christ into our hearts and brings us closer to you. May our lives be inspired by your love and may your love touch others through us. Amen. blessing it has been to worship with you this morning. <coughs> I hope that we can continue our time together, being together in joy in the celebration over for coffee time, um, for our coffee hour and right across the parking lot. If, if you are unfamiliar with where that space is at, I just invite you to um, look for somebody you might either have a name tag on or just to follow the direction of those going across the parking lot. All are welcome to come over there for some time together, some food, some coffee, some tea. It's a time for us to continue to encourage each other and also to just, as we prepare to go into the week ahead, to just be able to have that connection. I ask that you also drop off your communion cups um, that you had the juice and the bread in in the trash cans, place your prayer requests, your offerings, your hug alerts, um, and the communication cards and the baskets in the back of the sanctuary. <coughs> and before we have our closing prayer, I just invite you to stand in body or in spirit to sing our closing song number 664, sent forth by God's blessing.
ask for first a blessing for our offering and then a blessing for you as you go into the week ahead. Loving God, we ask that you bless all that we offer today. Not only what we give of our money, but also the offerings of our time and our talents. And now as you go from here, remember this, that God we serve is merciful and compassionate, endlessly patient and full of faithful love. God is trustworthy in all that God says and faithful in all that God does. So go out in confidence, knowing that God goes with you. Amen. Amen.